I'd like us to focus on a couple of lines that we find in the readings today. We've listened to the responsorial psalm, into your hands, O Lord, I entrust my spirit. And Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. And here we listen to the words of Jesus telling us very clearly, don't worry about what you have to say because the Spirit of God will be given to you at the right time to help you. And it's an invitation to recognize the Spirit of God in our own lives and the way the Spirit of God works. What I'd like to do is to share with you what I consider to be an experience of the Spirit of God at work at this particular time of the year. It's the day after Christmas, but we're still reflecting on that beautiful message of Christmas. And I'm drawn back to an experience some 35 years ago when it, I was stationed at that time in a parish called Cristo Luz del Mundo in Lima, Peru. It was a, an area where the very poor lived at the edge of the city, a desert area built where the homes were built up on the side of the mountains. Most of the residents were in need of housing, and so they had invaded the property until the day I left. They still didn't have title to the land, and so they lived a great insecurity almost constantly. But they also lived in insecurity because 50% of them didn't have a steady job. Many of them worked out on the streets. Many of them sold whatever they could find just to, to raise enough to keep their families going. And so that was the experience for me, or the better, better still, the background where I was when we came together to celebrate Christmas. It was an area of, in which people lacked the basic necessities. There was no electricity. There was no running water. Health care was at a minimum. The insecurity that families lived because of the precarious situation was a constant. And so I remember asking myself, how do you celebrate Christmas in this ambience? I had arrived there in the month of July, and here we were four months later getting ready to celebrate Christmas. And Christmas as I knew it as a Canadian, I found myself in Lima, Peru without all the props. There were no trees, there were no decorations, hymns or Christmas carols being piped into a shopping center and people running around, but rather living in a very poor area. And when we gathered together at the invitation of Sister Irene McDonnell to prepare for Christmas, we started by reading the scripture readings. And as I listened to people reflecting on them, these were the parish leaders, it was surprising to me to find that they easily identified with the shepherds. The shepherds, they felt, were people like them. They were people who were poor. They had animals, and some of the men in the room where I was sitting had their own animals, but it was more than that. They saw the shepherds as people who, because they didn't keep the laws of the Sabbath, were isolated, they were marginated, and these people lived on the edge of the city, and their life and their experience of life was one of margination. But yet in the midst of all that, I can remember them reflecting on the shepherds, and it went deeper than just having the animals. What they began to say was that the shepherds were very poor, but it was to them that the angel appeared, and it was to them that the angel announced the good news. It was to them that the notice or, the, or the, the good news of the Messiah was given. And I remember listening to Don Domingo. He probably saw the puzzled look on my face as I listened to them. And he turned to me and he said, Padre, you're not getting it. When the angel appeared to them, he told them the Messiah was living in a stable. He was one of them. He was a poor person. And so the gift that the shepherds received that evening was the gift of being able to acknowledge that the Messiah was a poor person like them, that they were invited to believe in themselves as people loved by God. That was God's gift to them that evening. And Don, Don Domingo looked at me, he said, Pali, don't you get it? That was the gift that God gave to the shepherds that evening, and that's the gift that God gives to us today. As poor people, we acknowledge and we recognize that just as God loved the shepherds, we too are loved. The human condition is not the primary factor. 
The love of God is for everyone. And as he spoke to me, I really believed and felt that this is the Spirit of God speaking. And what I'm thinking of and I'm reminded of are the words of Pope Benedict in his recent encyclical, his recent, recent papal letter on charity, reminds us that not only do we speak the good news to others, but we must recognize that God is revealed to us in the vulnerable points of humanity, in the poor, in people who are suffering. And it's there, not only in the, the joy, the carols, the shopping, but it's the vulnerable points of humanity that we are called to attend to. That's where God is being revealed. And it's there and then that we remember the words of Matthew, when did we see you hungry? When did we see you naked? When you did it to one of these, the least of my brothers and sisters, then you did it to me. And so as we celebrate this feast today, we acknowledge the work of the Spirit in our world, and we give thanks for this, the Spirit of God in the lives of people who have gone before us, the lives of people we know and meet with day in and day out, but the Spirit of God who continues to work and speak to us day in and day out. Please stand. We pray this day for the many people who have written in and asking that their intentions be remembered. For all of them, for those intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray during this Christmas season that each of us may be able to recognize that we are loved by God, but in turn called to love others, even our enemies. For that gift to be able to love, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the gift of peace for those troubled zones in our world, and we ask the, for the grace to acknowledge that we, above all, are to be peacemakers. For that grace for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord and we ask this through Christ our Lord. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquity, cleanse us all from our sin. And pray, friends, that this, our sacrifice, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Father, be pleased with the gifts we bring in your honor as we celebrate the feast of St. Stephen and grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Your holy martyr Stephen followed the example of Christ and gave his life for the glory of your name. His death reveals your power shining through our human weakness. You choose the weak and make them strong in bearing witness to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In our unending joy to you, we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as they praise your glory forever. Mm -hmm. 